We are wrapping up another week of virtual town halls. Thank you for joining us this Friday. I'm Mary Alice Stemler and I'm Michael Wooten. We're going to get to a lot of your questions over the next half hour, including the connection between COVID-19 and stroke. A top expert from Gates Stroke Center will talk about that. Plus, have you heard of COVID toes? Is that a real thing? And you've been asking us about pet cats. We're going to hear from a veterinarian. All of that ahead, but let's start with the three things you need to know right now. At number one, thanks to a significant increase in testing, we're seeing the number of confirmed cases rise. The city of Buffalo now has more than 1,000 residents who have COVID-19 or who had it before. Number two, speaking of the city, encouraging numbers regarding some first responders. Mayor Byron Brown said a short time ago that 53 city police officers have recovered from the virus and 33 Buffalo firefighters have recovered. Now, if you combine both departments, you still have 11 people battling the disease and 40 on administrative leave. And number three, something we've covered a lot here on the town hall. The governor announced today all county boards of elections will send out absentee ballot applications to all registered voters. That way, if you want, you can fill it out, send it in with the postage prepaid, and then get a ballot by mail for the June election. Now let's get to your questions. And the first one is directly related to the big news story over the past 24 hours. A viewer named Alex said to us, can you please verify that there's no way it's safe to ingest a disinfectant to kill coronavirus? I can't believe I'm asking. Well, this relates to comments that the president made at his last briefing. He said today that he was being sarcastic last night. It is an important issue, though, and it's one that got addressed today by NBC's Dr. John Torres. The president has proposed looking into disinfectants and ultraviolet light. But here's the bottom line. There is never a time you should be ingesting, inhaling, or injecting disinfectants like bleach or rubbing alcohol into your body. These are toxic chemicals that won't kill the virus inside your body, but they could kill you. UV light. There's a reason we use sunscreen to block ultraviolet rays from our skin. That's because UV light can cause cancer. Now, some hospitals do use UV light to decontaminate masks, but they do it safely without any people getting exposed. But we don't have a mechanism to apply UV light in the same way to the body, either inside or out. And a reminder, do not try any treatment or medicine without talking to your doctor. And again, don't inhale, ingest, or inject disinfectants into your body. Well, this is one of those situations, Michael, and I'm not an apologist for the president, but uh, in this era of really heightened concern, the mere suggestion of something that might be dangerous, and the president said he was joking, but no one's laughing right now. So I think that uh, as we've seen him do so many times when he's sarcastic or funny or flip, you know, his supporters on the one side get the joke and then the other half absolutely think what he's saying is dangerous. So it does give an opportunity, though, for everyone to be educated about what they should and should not be doing. Yeah, and that's why you have so many doctors like Dr. John there coming out today just to make it very crystal clear to everybody. Don't think about doing this. There you go. Well, we want to turn to a very important topic now. A lot of you have asked about the symptoms of COVID-19. Initially, the CDC said the most common symptoms were fever, cough and shortness of breath, but that list keeps growing. There's now a connection between the virus and blood clots. Here in western New York and really around the country, there is an increase in strokes. Why is that the case? Well, I talked a short time ago with Dr. Alad Levy, who is chair of UB Neurosurgery and also co-director of the Gates Stroke Center. When these patients come in with an acute stroke, we don't know if they're COVID positive, so we assume they are. So we do a unique COVID protocol. Really, we've developed this only in the past one to two weeks. Um, so, and then when these patients come in, we, we use the latest technology to open the vessels in the brain while we're waiting for the COVID test to come back. And then we run a battery of tests to understand why are they clotting. Some theories, obviously gyms are closed right now. People are more sedentary, especially in Buffalo. It's been cold. We haven't been able to get outside. Um, we, we have a demographic here that has the usual risk factors of smoking, maybe weight issues, and again, the sedentary issues. People who are suffering from COVID, if they've been febrile, they can't maybe keep fluid in, so they're feverish, they're losing fluid that way, or they can't keep fluids down, so that dehydration increases the risk of blood clots through viscosity. So I think when you put that all into the soup, we're seeing that 20% increase or that jump in, in young stroke patients. 
And the doctor said, obviously, this is very concerning to them. They're trying to figure out the exact connection here, but a 20% increase in the number of people coming in with strokes is alarming. Um, we're going to have a lot more of our interview with the doctor and what he says to people to help them through all of this coming up tonight at 10 and 11. Yeah, there's so much we don't know again about the virus and its effect on our bodies. And then, of course, just sitting at home more than, you know, the usual activity we've had is just never a good thing. Luckily, tomorrow it's going to be 60 and sunny. Know, we can get out. Wait, we'll talk yeah. about that later, right? right. Uh, let's get now to a popular question we've gotten over the past couple of days. Anne asked us, is COVID toes really a thing? Simple question, but not <laughs> such a simple answer. So if you haven't seen this out there, many doctors believe purple or blue lesions on the toes could be tied to the new coronavirus with a couple of explanations. Perhaps it's an infection or maybe it is a blood vessel clot. Research is underway into this as well. Mm, well, right now this is mostly showing up in younger patients who don't have a more serious reaction. But doctors are also seeing this in some of the most severe cases of people with ARDS or acute respiratory distress syndrome, which is often deadly. Antibody testing, correlating those with positive antibodies with those who've had these COVID toes will allow us to start to make a more definitive connection or not. We're largely seeing this in children and young adults. It certainly is also occurring in uh, middle aged and older adults as well. Uh, but most of these individuals are otherwise fine. OK, Michael, there's one more thing I need to obsess about <laughs> checking my toes for yeah. a potential problem there. I can almost hear, you know, hashtag COVID toes trending, but it's another way that this virus may be, you know, causing a reaction that they're still discovering. Yeah, when I got that email from Ann, I, I thought at first, like, maybe she misspelled something. Right. I just hadn't seen it in the news right. yet. COVID toes. It just seems so strange, but it turns mm. out uh, there's a lot of research around it now. Yep, it's a thing. Alrighty, well, earlier this hour, we reported on so many gloves being left in parking lots, and we've previous, previously addressed the glove issue here during our town halls. Now, experts say they're only good to use if you use them properly, and some doctors are worried that people are not practicing good techniques, lending to this warning. If you don't take your gloves off properly, you can actually contaminate yourself in the process. The likelihood of you acquiring COVID-19 from going to the grocery store is very minimal. It can actually be more of a hazard. And there's other kinds of infections out there that you might pick up inadvertently um, by mishandling gloves. This makes me think about the debate that we had over masks as well, and it's all about using the mask properly, but it seems like the consensus among all the experts was, okay, masks are worth it. You need to be using them. Gloves, I don't think it's it's quite to that point yet. There, There is some kind of dissension out there um, in terms of whether or not we should be wearing gloves to go to a place like the grocery store. It's true, and at the very least, I think it gives people a false sense of security mm -hmm. because yep. it is just as easy, you know, to cross contaminate when you're wearing gloves and thinking, oh, I'm safe. But when you're reaching for other things, your purse, your phone, you know, you have the potential to transmit things when you're whether you're wearing gloves or not. Yeah. So just stick with the hand washing and the hand sanitizer. They always say that's the top thing. Yeah, no matter what you're doing. Right. Uh, we want to get back to a question that we actually addressed here yesterday at 530. Someone asked us how much stimulus funding is going to local colleges and universities. A viewer further asked us how will that money be spent and will it actually help students? Well, we showed you the numbers, how much the 10 largest four year schools are going to get from Washington, D.C. But now we're learning more about the second half of that question, how it's going to be spent. Colleges and universities are figuring out their plans on how to spend the millions of dollars. First and foremost, half of it must go directly to students. Today, Damon College told us it has set up a program for students to go online, fill out some information, and a committee will decide how to divvy out the stimulus money based on need. If a student wants to try to get the stimulus dollars, what we've told them is, you know, fill, fill out the form online. Uh, Damon.edu slash COVID-19. You can see everything. Everything is very trans, um, uh, transparent and out there for people. They fail to form. Uh, the committee is making their way through all of those. And then ideally within about three weeks, they'll have, we'll be able to conclude the process, get them a decision, get them their funds and so forth. Ideally. 
a lot of it just depends on the federal government and other things as well. But if they have immediate needs right away, we have a care fund. They just can reach out to us in, in student affairs. And other institutions are taking a bit of a different approach. St. Bonaventure told us today that it is going to split up the money evenly among all the students. So the other half of the funds, by the way, to go into each of these colleges and universities, um, they're figuring out how they're going to be spending that. You may hear this. I left my um, speaker up. We just got the one minute warning for the right. president. So that's what you're <laughs> hearing um, right beside me here at my desk. That's quite all right. But yeah, your point is well taken. The colleges are really being challenged with trying to find the right thing to do and not knowing really about the problems in the future that might yeah. come up because how we don't know how long all of this will last. The low, if you are a college student right now, soon you should hear from your college mm -hmm. or university about how they're going to give that money out to students. Yeah, absolutely. So.